Okay, so let's go over this class here real quick for headquarters. Come on. Uh, this one's going to be called Surely Your Sin Will Find You. Surely Your Sin Will Find You. Uh, we're going over this class because, uh, you know, since we, uh, Captain Severus and myself, you know, we, we became captains in of IUIC. We have taken more of a step back in Miami and a lot of the handling of the body is done by the officers. That's, that's why we send them to y'all and it, you come up here at the last moment when... All right, it's time for judgment. You know, it's the way that it's set up yep. according to the law. It says the officer 10, 20s, and 50s, let them handle the matters. And every hard matter, you brought it up to Moses. So it's just the same thing we're doing uh, today as it is written. Um, but a lot of y'all think y'all can secretly sin in Miami and the Lord won't reveal you. Got another thing coming. Surely your sin will find you. All right, let's go to Romans 15 and 4. Let me try to get through this class quickly. The book of Romans, chapter 15 and verse 4. Uh -huh. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Read it again. One more time. What, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Uh, the, the Israelites in Rome who were detached from God for, you know, God knows how long exactly. But Paul had to remind them that what's written aforetime is written for you to learn again. And it's written for you to learn about God. Because they didn't know who the true God was. We read about in Acts where he went, he was in uh, the Greek cities and they was worshiping an unknown God. That's what they was in, an unknown God. They didn't know who he was. They just worshiped on Mars Hill, I think it was. Um, an unknown God. It's the same thing with us waking up and coming back today. We don't truly know God. Therefore, we take him as a joke. So you got to relearn about God. And here, here's the the power go to job 38 we got to relearn how powerful the god of israel is that we dealing with and if you look out in, into society look out into your life you look out into the body and just use your spiritual eyes you see how powerful god is if if we don't catch it the first time uh, when it comes to the shaking of the tree when the lord get ready he shakes his tree to get rid of the the uh the bad fruit from the tree he'll shake it if we miss it now here comes some stuff you hear popping up like oh something's going on over here and then boop 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 boop, boop. all the ones that we didn't know of the lord found them for us and then they gone because the sin can't hide uh job 38 let's read one on down real quick let's see how powerful god is job chapter 38 verse one i read quick then the lord answered job out of the whirlwind and said who is this that Darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge. Who's out here speaking crazy? Basically, what he's talking about. Go ahead. Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. So get get your thinking cap on because I'm gonna ask you a question, and you better answer me. You know how that is with a parent with a with a kid. I'm about to ask you something, and you better answer me when I answer when I ask this. And I'll, I'll let you know I already know the truth, so you bet not lie. Gird up your loins because I'm about to ask you and I demand that you can't sit there dumbfounded. Don't sit there dumbfounded when I ask you this because you was talking smack in verse two. <laughs> now I'm about to ask this with questions based on what you were saying. And you better say something back. Or I got a backhand for you. Verse four. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Now he's now he, it's the power of God. He flexed on him. Where was you at? When I laid down the foundation, when I, when I when I even thought about making this place, where was you at? Go ahead. Declare if thou hast understanding. Go ahead. Who who had laid? Nobody can even answer that question. <laughs> Off top, he hit him with you done. Where was you at? And I'm thinking in my mind because this is God. You know, a lot of us don't think God got him on. God get angry. God gets happy. God be sad, and he also gets sarcastic. Remember it. Uh, in Proverbs, he said, I'll mock you when your uh, your fear come. You know what that means to mock somebody? 
I told you, ha! <laughs> Didn't I tell you? That's like when you, when a child come up against a mama or a daddy, and the mama say or the daddy say, "I'm the one that made you." Yeah, How you know <laughs> yeah. more than me. You that's 12, what that 13. is right there. I can see God say, "Where where was you at?" <laughs> Declare to me. Speak. Go ahead. Who had laid the measures thereof? If thou knowest, or who has stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? So he's asking him, how did I put the world together? He's letting you know, it, it, this, this ain't just floating out and staying together in the middle of space by itself. I fashioned this thing. It's certain parts of the earth, how it stays connected and don't just explode off into the earth. I did that thing. Go ahead. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. The angels. Who or who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth as if it had issued out of the womb. When I made the cloud the garment thereof and the thick darkness a swaddling band for it and break up for it my decreed place and set bars and doors and said hitherto shalt thou come but no further so when i told the sea you cannot you can't turn into a tsunami unless i say so that's power right there because the right now as we speak the ocean is going back and forth back and forth and us being down here in in florida below sea level <laughs> You really wrap your mind around that thing. Before you was born, that ocean it was there, and it goes up and back, up and back, and ain't never passed that thing because God said, "Stay right here." What does it mean to be below sea level? That means the sea is higher than you. Yeah. So if He you says, "You know what? You know what? Water. You can go out and have some fun. Go out and have some fun." All of this is gone, and we did the math. We was um. Cause um, uh, when Deacon Ithon brought up the class about the uh the uh, uh the chariot last uh Sabbath, um, Florida is only a hundred and sixty miles across. It's only that it's long. It's like five hundred something miles long, but it's only a hundred and sixty miles from point from one coast to the other, east to west. So if the Lord said I wanted to wipe Florida off the map with just water, it won't be here no more. Easily gone like that. Um, okay, we're doing the powers of God, right? Reverse 11 again, speed up. And said, hitherto shall thou come, but no further. And here shall thou proud waves be stayed. Hast thou commanded the morning since thy days? And caused the day spring to know his place? That it might take hold of the ends of the earth? That the wicked might be shaken out of it? It is turned as clay to the seal, and they stand as a garment, and from the wicked their light is withholding, and the high arms shall be broken. Hast thou entered into the springs of the sea, and hast thou walked in the search of the depth? Has the gates of death been opened unto thee, or hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? Now, I brought this out. Who's in Savannah? A lot of you can't, we can't wrap our mind about what God just asked him. God just asked him, he says, um, has have the gates of death been opened unto thee or hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? That's that's a different dimension that we don't live in. You ain't none of us ever been there. Not even you, the ones that be on the deathbed and said, oh, I died and was brought back to life. You ain't been at the gates of death and stood there and opened the door like hey, death. Who, who you won't kill? That's the power of God. And then he, he let, no, you know what? Ain't nobody dying today. Shut the door on death. We remember, we brought this out in Savannah. So even, uh, how many people saw the movie, uh, the show Cribs? MTV Cribs, right? Oh, yeah, MTV, MTV Cribs. MTV Cribs. Remember, they would take you to the homes. And in this room, we got the bottles of rosé here. Right here. <laughs> yeah, look, yeah. This is the garage. We, get, we got 100 cars parked in the garage. Right here, we hear the Most High doing the same thing. This is where we keep death. <laughs> Open up the door. I can unleash them anytime I want. Yeah. But no, nah, close the door. Close the door. Right here, we keep the clouds, the thunder clouds. We wipe out our countries with the thunder clouds. Yep. I'm telling you, that's exactly what we're reading. That's next level. He says, or oh, hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? That's heavy. Any, any, any one of us get close to death, it's over. There ain't no coming back from it. 
God said, I stand outside the doors of it and be like, hey, if I look right in there. I can see all the dead people right now. I'm looking at them. And death can't touch me. Where was you at? You ever seen those before? That's power. Lazarus question. Yeah, that's a Lazarus question. <laughs> Verse 18. Verse 18. Has thou perceived the breadth of the earth? Declare if thou knowest it all. Uh huh. Where is the way where light dwelleth? Here we go. Where is the way that light dwelleth? Go ahead. And as for darkness, where is the place thereof? I keep light and darkness. I, I keep it in the palm of my hand. Where does it come from? Mm. Go ahead. That thou shouldest take it to the bound thereof, and that thou shouldest know the paths to the house thereof. Knowest thou it because thou was th knowest thou it because thou was then born, or because the number of thy days is great? You think you know because you got a little gray hair on your head, is what he's saying. Go ahead. <laughs> has thou entered into the treasures of the snow, and or has thou seen the treasures of the hail, has which ha, which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? By what way is the light parted, which scattereth the east wind upon the earth? Who hath divided a water course for the overflowing waters, or a way for the lightning of thunder? So the Lord let you know that the the Lord the thunder has a certain path that it has to follow, because I created it. It don't come you know you know it don't come no other way but how I told it to do. Go ahead. To cause it to rain on the earth where no man is, on the wilderness wherein there is no man. Like the the uh the desert. What's that? The Sahara Desert. Ain't nobody out there, ain't nothing out there, but I make it rain just because I want to. Go ahead. To satisfy the desolate and waste ground, and to cause the bud of the tender herb to spring forth. Has the rain a father? Or has the or has begotten the or who or who but has begotten the drops of the dew, out of whose womb came the ice, and the hoary frost of heaven, who hath gendered it? The waters are hid as with a stone, and the face of the deep is frozen. Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pallades, or loose the bands of Orion? Now he went up into the heavens. Now he's up into the heavens. He's constellation. He's flexing on him. Yeah. This is the power of God. Go ahead. Canst thou bring forth Mazaroth in his season? I don't even know who that is. Go ahead. <laughs> or canst thou It says in here the great bear. I, I don't know who that, that is. Are, these are constellations. Constellation and planets as right. well. He mentioned okay. one of the planets. Go ahead. And canst thou guide Arctur Ar Arcturus with his sons? That's another one too. Okay. Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? Can thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? Can thou lift up thy voice to the clouds where that abundance of waters may cover thee? Can thou send lightnings that they may go and say unto thee, here we are? Who has put wisdom in the inward parts? Or who has given understanding to the heart? Okay, I'm going to stop on that right there. That's where he, he flexed on Job, right? Now mm. go to Sirach 1 and let's read verse 8. That's, yeah, you can't answer those questions. Esau makes it up. You know, I was telling right. Zahira, I, think, I was telling Zahira how it might be, I don't know who it was, but you be watching those planet shows on like Netflix and stuff, like Planet Earth yeah. and all that type stuff. And they be, Esau be commentating, narrating the stuff. They, I thought to myself, I'm like, dude, they literally making this stuff up. Yeah, they are. Like, how the hell you know the bird dance like this? <laughs> what, what is, how do you know the reason he's doing that stuff? They make that stuff up and make you think they know what they're talking about. They guys like, dude, you don't know what you're talking about. And then put some music behind it. Uh, read Sirach 1 and verse 8. The book of Sirach chapter 1 and verse 8. There is one wise and greatly to be feared. The Lord sitting upon his throne. Jump up to verse 1 to show you why he's greatly to be feared. Verse 1. All wisdom cometh from the Lord and is with him forever. Who can number the sand of the sea and the drops of rain and the days of eternity? Mm -hmm. Who can find out the height of heaven and the breadth of the earth and the deep and the and wisdom? Wisdom hath been created before all things and the understanding of prudence from everlasting. Wisdom hath been created before all things. Now Esau likes to think he knows how deep the earth really is. But God says who can find out how deep the earth really is? 
Esau think he he's proud. He's prideful enough to say we know how it is. The Mariana Trench or something they say the right. deepest part. They don't know that God got other places here, right? Go to Proverbs eight, and let's read twenty two and twenty three. It says, and the understanding of prudence from everlasting. The book of Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 22. Uh -huh. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Before his works of old, I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. And when there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled before the hills was i brought forth okay so so let's see who's paying attention it says that um where does it say that it says i was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was what was set up from everlasting we read it in sirach let's see who's paying attention darius what you got let's see wisdom wisdom all praise he's paying attention wisdom all right, so let's read uh, verse 24 again. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 24. When there, was no, when there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While, he, while as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he had get, when he gave the, to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the fountain foundations of the earth. So, so wisdom is giving you um, a recount of the power of God. Before the, the uh, mountains was here, before the dust settled, before the water was here, before the heavens was made. That's a, a recount of the power of God of all that he did. Wisdom was there watching it. Now, precept upon precept, you understand wisdom is Christ. Wisdom is Christ, right? Uh, go to Job 34 and let's read 14, 15 real quick. Job chapter 34, verse 14. Yep. If he set his heart upon man. So here's, here's we're going back to the power of God, right? Read that. If he set his heart upon man, if he gather unto himself his spirit and his breath, all flesh shall perish together, and man shall turn again into dust. Now, now we, we watch movies. Where do we see something like you said? Where do we see that? What movie was it? Uh, who's that in the back? Lawa Habia? Where do we see that at? So who who did it? Give me the give me the, the scene. Th what was it? Thanos in the end game. What did he do? He snapped his fingers. He did it. Boom. They got that from the Bible. Job let you know if God really wanted to flex his power on you, he just say he just take your breath from you. That's like he a, disintegrate you in a heartbeat. Right. That's like that movie Dark Tower where uh, yeah. Matthew McConaughey would tell people and, uh, to sleep. Idris Elba. Yeah, he'll tell people sleep. Oh, stop breathing. Or stop breathing. Yeah. And that's it. They're over. It's yep, done. It was over. Uh, go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, verse 9. So if God really wanted to, he could just say, Spirit, come home. Breath, I want you back. Everybody would drop dead on the spot. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, and verse 9. Not that thou was unable to bring the ungodly under the hand of the righteous in battle or to destroy them at once with cruel beasts or with one rough word. With what? One rough word. He didn't even got to form a sentence. Just a word. Read that thing again. It ain't, ain't got to be no sentence. He ain't got to write out no sentence, no period, no comma, just one rough word. Like Die. Done. <laughs> Everybody. How many people that Esau saves on the face of the earth? Just throw it out there. What's the number, brothers? Seven billion people dead instantly. If he really wanted to flex his power. Wow. 
Yeah, right. Then, then wake him up again. <laughs> Read that thing again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12 and verse 9. Not that thou was unable to bring the ungodly under the hand of the righteous in battle, or to destroy them at once with cruel beasts, or with one rough word. One rough word. Seven billion people on the face of the earth will cease to exist. Quick, over, done with. That's the power of God. What makes us think that we can hide sin from God if he could kill everybody in an instant? Oh, the pride of man. Yes. Uh, that's why I went through that, just to r let you realize wh who we're dealing with. That's who we're dealing with, and that's how merciful he is. And Deacon I thought went over to class how powerful his son is. When he step on the earth, the stuff is going to melt around him. He got beams of uh, a light flying out of his hand. He didn't even need a sword. He going to kill everybody with just the words in his mouth. With rough words. With rough words. That's his son. Just imagine what kind of power God got. So, he got so much power, he didn't got to get up off the throne. Angels, go do my dirty work. Angel of death, go. And you know how many people die on a daily basis in the world? And that's the angel of death doing that. Let me show you how powerful an angel is. Go to e, uh, Isaiah. Hey, Cap, I got you after this. Okay, go to Isaiah. We're building up to something, y'all. Isaiah chapter 37. And um, I want to read 33 through 36 that, real quick. Okay. The book of Isaiah chapter 37 verse 33. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with seals, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into this city, saith the Lord. For I will defend this city to save it for mine own sake, and for my son, my servant David's sake. Uh-huh. Then the angel of the Lord went forth. Then the angel of the Lord. That's one. Go ahead. Went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians. A hundred and four score and five thousand. That's a hundred and eighty five thousand people. Go ahead. And when they arose early in the morning. When the sun just came up around six o'clock. Go ahead. Behold, they were all dead corpses. That's one angel. 185, y'all don't even know, we don't even know how many, you can't even imagine it, 185,000 people when the sun went down, by the time it came back up, it's dead bodies laying everywhere. One angel took out 185,000. And they didn't just fall down dead. He was going through slashing and destroying. He was Neo times 10 million. Right. <laughs> That's just an angel. That ain't even the most high. Um, so now let's go to Deuteronomy 28, 64. One angel killed 185,000 people before the sun came up. God ain't playing with us. He's merciful, though. Uh, read that. Deuteronomy 28, 64. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. I like using this because it lets us know that we don't know who we're dealing with. God wasn't playing when he said, you're going to serve other gods. Wood and stone. You won't know me when you get, when I, wherever you're going, before I wake you up, you can think you worshiping me or you got a personal relationship with me as much as you want to. The scripture cannot be broken. You will not know me where I come from. You're really going to think that I love everybody. But I killed the firstborn of every Egyptian. You don't know me how I get down for real. I was ready to kill y'all in the wilderness if it wasn't for Moses. That's 600,000 some people. He told Moses, move. I'll start over again with you. Yeah, people don't understand in the times of Noah... He drowned pregnant women. He drowned babies. Yeah, we don't he think he drowned the elderly. He only saved eight people alive. What you think happened to the other people? They drowned to death. Yep. That's what happened. That's a terrible way to go. Right. Sodom and Gomorrah. That's another one. 
old, young, right. infant. It didn't matter. They Wiped killed them, them all. off the face of the earth, man. Uh, go to Jeremiah 4, 21, 22. So that being said, you don't know God. We got to relearn God. That's why he said, fear me. The fear of God will keep you safe. Uh, Jeremiah 4, 21, 22. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, verse 21. How long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? For my people is foolish. They have not known me. We don't what? They have not known me. We have not known God. Read. They are sottish children. And they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no understanding. God they have said, no knowledge. You don't know me like you think you do. Numbers 32, 23. My people are foolish to think that they can really hide stuff from me. I set the heavens. I told the water to stay where you at. I walked on the bottom of the deep. I stood at the gate of death. And you really think you go hide? I'm going to show you how powerful God is. We're going we to keep going. Surely your sin will find you. Numbers 32, 23. The book of Numbers chapter 32, verse 23. But if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord. And be sure your sin will find you out. Read it again. But if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord. And be sure your sin will find you out. Be sure it's without a doubt. It will find you. It's only a matter of time. It is only a matter of time. Example in here. We literally like you would. God will make you tell on yourself. And you don't even know it. You think you're doing right. Out there committing fornication. But you want to bring your baby to the Sabbath with you. Baby stuff some grown damn trees. If you're a man and you want to bring a baby to the Sabbath, that damn baby, you didn't plant that in the ground and it grew on a tree. Babies don't do that. Where's the mama at? Oh, damn. I didn't think y'all was going to ask me that. Where's the mama at, brother? She's at home. Where's she at home for? Are you married to her? You got papers? How come she never been here? She ain't, no, we ain't married on paper. Oh, really? Right. How long you been with us? About a year. Oh, surely your sin found you out. And God made you tell on yourself because we had no idea. Because brothers think they slick. They think they're going to try to justify themselves by cleaning up the act. I'm going to bring this baby in here, all right, without attaching the mother and thinking we're not going to ask that question. That's how you know Satan is dealing with you right now. Mm -hmm. Because you think the, that the wisdom of God is not going to allow us to ask that question. We're just going to say, oh, okay, bring that little cute baby in here. We're going to yeah. assign one of these sisters. going to be the raised land, in the truth. Hey, bring hey, it on in. Come on. Cap. Come on now. Cap, you, you, would, you would be coming for, the, for so many, like I said, a whole year, right? And never have, uh, or, or while she's pregnant, when she has the baby. And then never have to come in here with the baby until she says, you know what? It's your baby. You need to be taken care of. <laughs> yeah. Now you're forced to come to the Sabbath with the little child. Yep. And where, God, where, God where, revealed where that come from. And exactly. Now everybody. Wait, I've never seen this brother I've with a baby. baby. How old is that baby? Three months? <laughs> months? How long you been with us? A year? Hmm. I ain't never seen you with a woman in here. Right. Hmm. Surely your sin will find you out. Uh, go to uh, Sirach 17. This is why. Ecclesiastes 17 and let's read verse 18. This is why our sin finds us out in due time. In due time. If you if you going to keep the commandments and break bread with the Lord, you you are on uh, his radar. Just like Job was. Every one of our lives is on the radar of God. And when you step out of line, he going to correct you. Uh, for this reason, read 17 and 18. Sirach chapter 17 verse 18. Uh-huh. Whom, being his firstborn, he nourisheth with discipline. That's why your sins keep getting found out. That's why you can't hide it. Because you are the firstborn of God. You the Israelites. And he's nourishing you with discipline. You will not do what you want to. Right. Being God's kids. He going to expose you. You won't do something at school, hide stuff, write it on your notebook. Oh, ho, ho, 
oh, leave it around. You just go, you, you gonna leave it around one day, <laughs> and then daddy gonna go through and search and find it. Whoa! Nobody knew this kid had a th- was two Cap. pocket school. Cap. And the initial thought when it was right, and it was, damn, I gotta make sure I hide this good. Nobody can't see this. That's the initial thought. That's initial I'm gonna write X Y Z, and surely I gotta make sure I cover this up. Mm. Oh, well, yo, yeah, one page with scriptures on it, and then you put it on the back because you don't wow. think nobody gonna look at it. Read that again, verse eighteen. Whom, being his firstborn, he nourisheth with discipline. That's why he keeps exposing your sin. God is disciplining you. He's just using man to do it before he has to flex his power on you. Right. If he flexes his power on you, we read earlier, one rough word. Go ahead. And giving him the light of his love doth not forsake him. Read on. Therefore, all their works are as the sun before him. They what? All their works are as the sun before him. How many of y'all can look up into the sun and not squint your eyes on a bright sunny day? I know when the clouds is up, you might be able to look for like two, three seconds, then you got to look away. I'm talking about when there ain't no cloud in the sky, you can just stare at it. Look at who can do that? We can't do that. So, so the, your, your, Sin is like the sun. God illuminates that thing. He sees every single part of it. Everything. And we're going to get, I'm going to keep going to it. Yeah, he sees the process. I'm going to get to it how deep the Lord sees it. Uh, Read verse 19 again. Therefore, I got all, speed up. Go ahead. Therefore, all their works are as the sun before him, and his eyes are continually upon their ways. All your actions, read. None of their unrighteous deeds are hid from him. None of, what's what's another way of saying unrighteous deeds, brothers? Sin. Go ahead. But all their sins are before the Lord. He sees it all. Go to Sirach thir- uh, twenty-three. Let's read sixteen through nineteen, real quick. The book of Sirach, chapter twenty-three. Verse 19. 16 through 19. Verse 16. Two sorts of men multiply sin, and the third will bring wrath. A hot mind is as a burning fire. It will never be quenched till it be consumed. A fornicator in the body of his flesh will never cease till he hath kindled a fire. So a man that is, uh, you, you got an angry spirit. You're going to multiply sin. It's going to reveal itself. You can't hide it. God going to put you in situations to make you uh, handle that thing, correct it. Um, and the man who's a fornicator, the Lord is going to expose you, whether it want to be secret phone calls or not. Mm. A fornicator in the body of his flesh will never cease till he hath kindled a fire. You're going to multiply sin. Read on verse 17. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. He will not leave off till he die. Speed up. A man that breaketh wedlock, saying thus in his heart, Who seeth me? I am compassed about with darkness. I'm compassed about with darkness. Nobody can see this. The walls cover me, and nobody seeth me. Uh huh. What need I to fear? The Most High will not remember my sins. See, that's the foolishness of man. <laughs> that's the foolishness of man that thinking, because you're in the confines of your own home, your apartment, that God ain't watching. You right. Turn the lights off. You want to, hey, baby, how you doing? Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> you fine? Yeah, you sound fine, too. <laughs> <laughs> we teach in general now. Uh, verse 19. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men uh-huh. and knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are ten thousand times brighter than the sun uh-huh. beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret part considering the what the most secret part this is how powerful god is what's the most secret parts of a man or woman mm. let's see who knows what's the most secret parts of a man or a woman uh will right what's the most secret parts that that nobody knows give me a microphone where we at what's the most secret parts your heart your heart what is your heart Say it, make your it mind, easy. Your, your mind. mind. That's the most secret parts. You could be smiling at me and thinking in my I'm about to kill him. <laughs> That's the most secret parts. Nobody knows your thoughts. None of us. But God does. He knows them so much that it's ten thousand times brighter than the sun. Now let me show you this. Let's show you this. What's today's class called? Surely your what? 
And surely your sin will find you, right? Um, let's see how much time I got for one script. Okay, uh, go to Psalms 139. Let's read 11 and 12 real quick. The book of Psalms, chapter 139. Verse 11 and 12. Psalms 139, verse 11. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day, and the darkness as the light are both alike to thee. It don't matter. Seeing it, it don't matter. It don't matter if it's bright out, if it's dark out, it don't it's all the same to God. You can't hide from him. So in, in our mind, understanding the power of God, you better stop thinking that you can hide your secret sin out there. The only reason he don't judge you on the spot for it is because he's giving you space to repent. But some of us do not take the uh, the warning that God is sending us. You know, you reap in a class, but ooh, you hear something, you be like, "Oh, I fall into that category," but don't nobody know, so I'm not. I ain't gonna say nothing. No, no, no at all. And as the Lord speaking to you, like I, that was your warning shot right there. Angel, don't do nothing. Just sit back. I got some for him. They think they slick. I'm going to set up a series of events. Mm. And they're going to get put on blast on Front Street. And then if they don't do that, after we, after I, I tell them a specific class on it, and they still don't repent, I'm going to have to decide what I'm going to do with them. My son will have to plead for them because you know my first thought. <laughs> um... Oh, so, let, let, go let, ahead. Oh, you finish that up. No, no, I think it's it on that verse. Okay, give it's me uh Second Ezra sixteen. Exactly what Cap said. The Lord will set up certain events where you will either expose yourself, your sin will be exposed, or you expose yourself. Either or. Watch this sixteen sixty three. The book of Second Ezra chapter sixteen in verse sixty three. Surely He knoweth your in Inventions. Hold on right there. Read verse 61 real quick and then jump down to 63. He made man and put his heart in the midst of his body. So he made man and he made the, your heart and put it in the midst of your body. Listen, read. Uh, jump to 63. No, you finished that up. Yes, sir. And put his heart in the midst of his body. Come on. And gave him breath, life, and understanding. Right. So he know the function of your mind already. He know it. Read. Yea, and the spirit of the of Almighty God, which made all things and searcheth out all hidden things. All what? All hidden things. Read a little fast now. Come in on. the secrets of the earth, so that he knoweth your inventions and what ye think in your hearts, even them that sin and would hide their sin. Come on. Therefore hath the Lord exactly searched out all your works, and he will put you all to shame. So he's the one who's put who exposing you. Read. When and when your sins are brought forth, you shall be ashamed before men. You see that before who? Before men. Come on. And your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. You see that your own sins, because you didn't take heed to the warning shots. You didn't take heed to the council. So guess what? You kept on secretly co committing those sins, and later on, what happens? Either they, the light shines on you, your brother or sister catch you right in the act. Look, oh my God, I got, I got to take a picture. Yeah, I got to videotape this. Yeah. I'm telling you, you better, better repent. Or you telling yourself? Or you telling yourself? Psalms 94 and 11. Right? Because we read and we found the mind. He knows the secret thoughts of your mind. Right? Read 90, 94 and 11. Psalms 94 verse 11. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of men and they are vanity. Blessed is the man whom, he, whom thou chastened, O Lord, and teaches him out of thy law. Read it again. Blessed is the man whom thou chasteneth, and... O oh Lord, and teaches him out of thy law. No, no, verse 11 again. I'm sorry. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man. He knows the thoughts of man. Go ahead. That they are vanity. Blessed is the man who thou chasteneth, O oh Lord, and teaches him out of thy law. So, so it, the reason why um, the Lord chastens you from the thoughts, because your thoughts end up becoming what, brothers? Let's go to it. You know what I want, Sirach. Let's go to it. Your your thoughts become actions, and they end up they'll end up doing this. Uh, let's see where I wanted it. Uh, so let's see. Let's start at Sirach twenty. 
Let's read 23. Just 23 at the top of it. One on down. Sirach chapter 23, verse 1. O Lord, Father and Governor of all my whole life, leave me not to their counsels, and let me not fall by them. Let me not fall by them. Go ahead. Who will set scourges over my thoughts and the discipline of wisdom over my heart? Over my mind. Read on. That they spare me not for my ignorances, and it pass not by my sins. Uh-huh. Lest my ignorances increase. Lest my ignorant thoughts increase. Read on. And my sins abound to my destruction. They do what? Abound to my destruction. Those thoughts in your mind will abound till you destroy yourself. Because those thoughts, what goes into the mind, comes out through the body. And if you are not willing to... um. Put your sins on front street before God. He'll do it in the worst way possible. Where some of y'all, uh, y'all, y'all cringe at the thought of class being about y'all. So them thoughts you got, he give you class after class after class to take care of it before they actually become actions. Because once it becomes an action more than just a thought, now judgment got to be passed. The thought was, okay, if the thought was just a thought, that's fine. You could have did away with that. You know, we can't, we can't condemn you uh, and judge you off of thoughts. We can't do that stuff. No, you got you correct that through the scripts. But with the actions come, oh, now judgment got to come behind that because your actions will eventually teach everybody else that it's okay. Especially if it goes unchecked. Yep, especially if it goes unchecked. So, and my sins, read that part again, verse 3. Lest mine ignorances increase, and my sins abound to my destruction. And I fall before mine adversaries, and mine enemy rejoice over me, whose hope is far from thy mercy. I'm telling you, your, your family, your friends, they are waiting on you to come back. Right. Right. <laughs> they are waiting on you to this phase of your life to pass and you to come on back home they waiting on it waiting on you to so you know uh your mama thinks she know you better than anybody she's waiting on you to get over this phase of your life so you can come back to celebrate halloween you can come back celebrating christmas come to the the, the uh family reunions waiting on it we always saved you a seat baby yep. i knew you come back home to your first love Right. And the, the worst thing about that is to be told, I told you, can't nobody keep all them commandments. Yep. Mm. All right, go to, um. let's see, let me see, let me see. Go to Matthew chapter 10, verse 26. That's the, okay. Somebody keep me, keep me on time. Matthew 10, 26. I only got a few The more. book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 26. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. So Christ is telling you there's nothing that is hid that shall not be known, not brought to light. Even your own sins, it will be brought to light. Everything must be judged. And none of us will get into the kingdom when an ounce of sin in us. That's why when we get taken up from here, you go into the wilderness. And that will and the wilderness is where he's gonna purge out the rebels. He's gonna purge out that sin in you, cause no defiled thing shall enter into it. The scripture can't be written. No defiled thing will enter into the kingdom. He's gonna purge out. He's gonna bring out all that sin. He's gonna put you in situations. And Lord's will, you rehearse the righteous acts now to get rid of it. Whether whether it be uh uh you 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 fornicating um outside the body or uh, with with people in the world you don't want no wife you don't want no husband uh you got some people scratching your itch uh you got phone sex you uh it's whatever it might be it's gonna be brought to light i'm telling you um now go to ezekiel 8 i'm gonna show you how much is gonna be brought to light just in case you didn't get it how powerful god is let's show you how he revealed it to ezekiel ezekiel chapter 8 Let's read verse 5. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 5. You smoke cigarettes, you, whatever it might be outside of here. We all know what you're doing out there. We'll know in due time. You can't hide it from God. Read Ezekiel 8, let's read 5 on down. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold northward at the gate of the altar this image of jealousy in the entry. Uh-huh. 
He said furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary, but turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, he looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Behold, he told me to look. Behold, it's a hole in the wall. It's a hole in the wall. It's just a little big hole. Look through that. Squint your eye. Look through that hole in the wall. See what they're doing. Go ahead. Then he said unto me, son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. So I, I gave you a little peep to see what was doing, what they was doing. Now dig inside. Dig a little bit deeper. Mm. Dig a little bit deeper. And behind that hole in the wall was a door. It's a whole lot going on. It went from just this to a door. Go to the door. Go ahead. And he said unto me, go in. And behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So inside of there, it started out with a hole in the wall. And then he digged a little deeper and he found the door. And then behind the door, they was making sure they sin couldn't be solved. Mm-hmm. Ezekiel never would have found that on his own. The Lord showed him that. See that little hole right there? Behind that? It's a lot more. Oh, you see that little look on her face? It's a lot more behind that. Keep hey, digging. You're hey, going to find something. Hey, Cap, that, that digging is that what it says in uh, Deuteronomy, that uh, uh, inquis- the diligent inquisition. Delicate, deliquit, diligent inquisition. When we You're start exactly asking right. you questions, why y'all so nosy? Mm-hmm. Why? Because we're trying to make sure that there's no sin in the body. Um. Let's see. Go, go. Reverse uh, ten. Verse ten. So when I so I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things, an abominable beast, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. Speed up. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel, and in the midst of them stood Jaazaniah, the son, the son of Shaphan, and with every man his censer in his hand and a thick cloud of incense went up so they even put up a lot of smoke mm. a lot a lot of smoke mm. around there the hole the door and then to light up a lot of candles and we're gonna stand right here in the middle so nobody can see what we're doing around here even if they do get in they're gonna be we're gonna be hiding behind this smoke we're gonna give them smoke and mirrors it ain't really what y'all think y'all see go ahead then said he unto me, son of man, has thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? They do it where? In the dark. They do it where? In the dark. Uh-huh. Every man in the chamber of his imagery. For they say, the Lord seeth us not. The Lord has forsaken the earth. So it says, the Lord seeth us not. Our ancestors thought they can actually do wickedness in the temple of God and thought God didn't see it. Ezekiel didn't know what was going on behind that hole in the wall, behind the door, behind the smoke. God said, come here, I'm going to show you something. They think I don't see what's done in the dark, but the dark is just like the light to me. It's nothing that can be hid. You can't hide nothing from me. I'm daddy. Right. The most I was like, is he, come, 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 look, come, come, come look at come this. Look at this. Come look Somebody at this. come look at this. He really think he's doing that. I want you to look at that. Don't say nothing to him. Just look. Just really look at what they think they're doing. Um, okay, so so with that, um, go to Mark chapter 7, verse 21, real quick. To show you where these, these evil acts first started at, Mark 7, 21 through 23, real quick. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. From, from within, out of the heart of men. Out of the mind of man, go ahead. Proceed evil thoughts. Adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these things, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. They do what? Come from within and defile the man. So your thoughts turn into actions. You can't even hide those from God. He'll expose those on you too. Go to um, Psalms 32 and 5. 
The book of Psalms. How does a man or or woman get to the point where you don't let your thoughts abound to your destruction? Psalms chapter 32 verse 5. I acknowledged my sin. You did what? I acknowledged my sin uh-huh. unto thee. And mine iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. So the first Salah. thing you better do. So those sins don't destroy you. You better acknowledge them to God. You better do that while he may be found. Because if you think you're going to hide him, he's going to expose you. And that destruction could be, okay, stand up. Stand up. Okay, read the scripture. Romans 16, 17. Have no communication with those. We'll stay in contact. Security, escort him out the door. Down you're out there by yourself dealing with with Satan. Well, all the... the um, the sin that's in your mind, Satan going to play on every single one of those points. Every single one of them. You better acknowledge them first to the most high. That's who you better acknowledge them to. Um, now, let's see. Uh, go to Isaiah chapter 26, verse 2. The book of Isaiah chapter 26, verse 2. Open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth May enter in. Isaiah 26 and 2? And three. Three. Oh, okay, yeah, read 2 and 3. Go ahead. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Read it again. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. How, how can somebody's mind... Um, how can you trust in the Lord when you know sin's gonna find you out? You know, what are some ways that somebody can trust in the Lord and overcome the sin before it finds them out? God puts you on front street. Oh, David, that is stand up. How can you trust in the Lord before your sin finds you out? Stand up. Oh, by, re- by I, repenting from your ways, I can't hear you. By repenting and changing what you do. By repenting and changing what you do. Okay, I'll take that. You better. Be. <laughs> Let's go next to him. Let's go to Ezra. <laughs> um, by fasting and praying, sir. Okay, fasting and praying. I like that. I like that as well. Give back to David. Stand up again, David. Give him another way. He get fasting and praying. You said repenting. I do. Give me some details. Okay. So the question is: the question is, says Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on Thee, because he trusts in You. How can we trust in the Lord so our sin don't find us out and end up destroying us? Give me another way. Give me some personal in your life. Can use an example in your life. By Give me a testimony. By constantly reading. You gotta speak up, man. By constantly reading on what you deal with, sir. Reading on what you deal with. Uh, that's that's a start. But will reading do anything to you if you just read it? And what you gotta do? You gotta put it into action. Gotta put it into action before your sin finds you out. Cause you can't hide from God. No matter your age. Here's the proof. Hey, go to Ecclesiastes. Hey, can I add something to that real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, David, stand up. Stand up again. And this is for all the young men especially. How is a, what is a way you can trust in the Lord? It's something that you must do all the time. Meditate on his prayer. Now, meditate. It deals with your parents. Respect them. What does the Bible say about what that? What does the Bible say about your parents? To honor, do what? Honor them. Oh, okay. To do what? Or what does honor mean? Keep the commandments, sir. All right. Give me, uh, give me Joseph. Young prophets. What does honor mean? When it says honor your parents. Obey them. Obey them. That's right. Obey them. So young prophets, and this is to everybody, we are supposed to obey our parents because what? They know better. They're here to guide you that your life 
may be law, long upon the land. Yep. Another thing you need to stress is in obedience, it's not just when your parents are around. The obedience yeah. also extends to when you're in school and when you're by yourself. Yep. So it's not just, oh, yes, dad, yes, mom. Not when you when you're in their presence, but also when you're at school, when you're by yourself. Yep. You understand? All right. And you know how God going to make sure that you obey your parents? He going to make he going to have his light of his countenance on you. So when you want to step out of line and think you sinning somewhere, oh, surely your sin going to find you out. Uh, Officer Luke, he going to expose you. Yeah, microphone right there. It's just a chime in on what Officer Abaddon and Officer Devere said. Because I know when I was young, my parents used to say, you're a representation of me yeah. when you leave the house. Yeah. So when you leave the house, you got to make sure you carry yourself like your parents on your back right then and there. Mm -hmm. Like they right there behind you. So that goes into exactly what, what, what they were saying. And God going to make sure that. Because if you don't, surely your sin will find you out. He going to make sure you obey your parents. He going to make sure you don't step out of line. No, no, no. Um, here and here's the uh, talk about God. Don't care about your age. Ecclesiastes eleven. Let's read verse nine and ten real quick. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter nine, eleven, verse nine. Excuse and 10. me, eleven, verse nine. Rejoice, O young man. O young man, young woman, rejoice. You in your twenties, you in your teens, rejoice. You got the, you know, you you got that run, you bounce back. It don't take you three, four days for your body to heal up. You bounce right back. <laughs> Go ahead. In thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart. In thy ways of thy mind. Go ahead. And in the sight of thine eyes. Now look, um uh what's that word where um Solomon's being sarcastic right here. Go ahead. Do what you want. Whatever come to your mind, go ahead and do it. You young. Live it up. He's being sarcastic. Here's a proof of it. Read the next part. But know thou. But know this. You won't live it up. You won't hang with the uh, with the crowd. You won't be the cool kid at the school. Oh, you 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 want to do you want secret sin on the phone? You won't do this. You won't do secret sin at your job. You won't be seen. Oh, you won't fornicate out there. You won't smoke cigarettes. Oh, you want to keep be nasty and have a a, a a crazy attitude. Nobody can't deal with you. Go ahead, go ahead, do that. But know thou, but know this that for all these things. God will bring thee into judgment because he sees it. Oh, I'm going to bring you into judgment. Go ahead, live it up. Live it up. But he, he don't even know that judgment is right. Judgment's the next door. <laughs> he said, oh, look, sin, here's the door of sin, and then the next door when he opened that is going to be what? Judgment. Oh, you're going to be like, dang, I got to go through the door to judgment? Yeah, you got to go through the door of judgment. If you want to continue on with your life, you got to go through the door of judgment. If you stay right here, I'm going to kill you. Oh, yeah. Uh, verse 10. Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh. Uh -huh. For childhood and youth are vanity. It ain't mean nothing. Your childhood and your youth don't mean nothing to God. When he says, surely your sin will find you out, he was talking to the to the, the, the teenager in high school, all the way up to the old sister at a job for 10, 20 years, the old man at his job for 50 years. When he said, My, your sin going to find you, I'm talking to all of you all. And I'm going to expose you. Um, Is that what I want on that? Okay, go back to uh, Isaiah 26. And let's read verse 3. Last scripture. Once again. The book of Isaiah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what we did pull that. Okay. Um, go to Leviticus 5 and 1. Because we have been on uh, a lot of this stuff been just you dealing with yourself exposing sin, right? Look what God did to make sure that you don't turn a blind eye and make sure you check each and every one in here. Look what God put in there. Look, so you can't so you just can't you know I'm good in your own little box right read that Leviticus chapter 5 and verse 1 and if a soul sin and hear the voice of swearing if you hear about it go ahead and it is a, and is a witness whether he has seen or known of it if you see it if you heard about it if you got a third party that somebody's in the midst of sin God testing you now 
You know how I get down. You know a little bit. You're a little bit wiser than they little dumb self over there because they think they can hide. But you know. You saw it. You, you seen it. And then somebody else came up to you and told you about it. Read. If he do not utter it, mm. then he shall bear his iniquity. God sees when you see sin and don't say nothing about it. God sees when you know about sin. Because as soon as the person that when he revealed they sin... Then that person who reveals the sin, uh, the getting the sin revealed, we go like, well, who, who do you talk to? Who do you counsel with? Ain't that her friend? Like he didn't see that. Let's let's ask him, cause he got it. You ain't telling all the truth. I know you ain't. Let me bring up your friend. Let me bring up your husband. Let me bring up your wife, cause it's something you ain't telling us. You hiding stuff, and then you get put on front street for not correcting the sin. You can't even hide as being a neighbor. 10,000 times brighter than the sun. Go back to Isaiah 26. And let's read um, verse 3. Book of Isaiah. Read the it. book of Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee uh -huh. because he trusted in thee. You trust in the Lord when you are willing to confess, you acknowledge, you don't hide your sin. That lets the Lord know you trust in him. And when that temptation comes upon you, what does he do? He'll make a way to escape out of it. But as long as you keep trying to hide it, it's going to find you out. It's going to expose you in Lord's will. He don't judge you for it. And the judgment be your life. That's the worst thing we want for God. You know, you got... On your day, your number, you know, um, I want them to leave at 84 years old, October 12th, 2000, whatever. But sin come up and you don't acknowledge it and you try to hide it. 84 turns into 54. What's the point of keeping them around? They ain't going to do nothing but keep hiding sin. They're going to destroy themselves and others around them with it. Take the life. I lent it to them anyway. It belongs to me. I can do what I want to with it. Uh, Ecclesiastes 12. Let's read 13, 14. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. This is all today's class summed up. Go ahead. Fear God. Do what? Fear God. Because you don't know who you're dealing with. You better fear him because you don't know the power of God. We got a glimpse of it right now, but we can't fully grasp the power of God. How this earth is just as big as it is, as heavy as it is, as wide as it is, as deep as it is. It ain't never moved since he created it. Floating out there in the middle of nothing. You better fear God. Read on. And keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. He's not playing about you keeping them commandments. That's the reason he gave you breath. Verse 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment. Some of them. Every work into judgment. A little of them. Every work into judgment. The big ones and the small ones. Read on. With every secret thing. Every what? Every secret thing. What's the secret thing that we got, brothers? What is it? Mind. Your mind. He going to bring them thoughts into judgment, too. Read on. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Whether it be what? Whether it be good or whether it be evil. I'm warning y'all. You better fear God. Because if you don't, surely your sin will find you out. It ain't a it ain't a, a if, it's a win. So I'm gonna end it on that today. Uh we wait on headquarters to come on. You brothers understand that? Yes, sir. Sisters, you understand that. You better, because we got a few of y'all when you talk to. All right, uh cutie music. Now you never see the true men of God. We are not black men, we are Israelites. <laughs>
make it so hard to serve God And why when I say that I'm a Jew, it sound odd For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it sound wrong, man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.